Could you imagine a world without computers? In the last hundred years, the world's technology has dramatically increased. Mankind evolved from riding in horse-drawn carriages to cars being able to drive themselves by satellite. Journeys that took days or even weeks now only take mere hours. Today's technological marvel is the computer. What first started out, started out as a big, hulking, glorified calculator is now a tiny, futuristic, multitasking machine. It is now part of our everyday lives. They help control our cars. It helps the government keep us safer. They help keep track of our money. They change the way humans analyze information. They helped us get a man on the moon and back. Computers revolutionized not only industries, but businesses and the United States in general, but even the world. The digital age has changed our lives from designing this building we live in to helping farmers reach maximum yield. One question that has baffled historians is why was it made? Who really created it? Where is the birthplace of the digital age? To start our journey, we need to go back to October 4th, 1903. Here in Hamilton, New York, a boy named John Vincent Atanasoff is born. Shortly afterwards, Atanasoff's father accepted a job in electrical engineering in Brewster, Florida, and he and fa his family moved to Florida. John grew up fascinated by math and science. Atanasoff was most fascinated by BASE II, also known as binary map, in which multiples increase exponentially. He graduated from high school at age 15 at the top of his class in everything, and shortly afterwards, he went to Florida State in 1921. Atanasoff graduated in 1925 with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Wanting his master's degree, 22-year-old John Atanasoff took a train to Ames, Iowa. A year later, Atanasoff started work on his thesis, a dielectric constant of helium. He spent hours working on the Monroe calculator to prove his thesis. That is when Atanasoff first developed the idea in his mind to build a faster, more powerful computing machine. He envisioned a device that was digital, not analog like all machines before him. He observed many mathematical devices available at the time and concluded that analog technology was not as accurate as digital technology. Atanasoff set out to build his idea. Frustrated with his results, Atanasoff took a long drive to Illinois. He often drove long distances when he was frustrated and needed need to clear his mind and think. While he was on one of these drives, he realized there's no way analog technology could ever be as accurate as it needed to be. It was at that time in a tavern on the border of Illinois, Atanasoff conceived the idea for a digital device that could solve linear equations, which at the time was considered by mathematicians to be near impossible. He would use electricity and electronics as the medium for his device, and he would use a base 2 system, binary code, as the language of the device. He would use all condensers for memory, and he would use regenerative processors that might be activated by a leakage of power. He started to build the so-called digital computer. A comparison between digital and analog technology would be an analog Walkman with a cassette tape, while digital is an iPod with digital memory. The difference between analog and digital technology is vastly different. Some consider the leap between analog and digital is a huge milestone in humanity. He soon built a very basic model that he presented to the board of Iowa State. The Iowa State board was astonished by this computer. They were very impressed and saw this amazing project worthy of a grant of $850, equal to about $14,000 in today's money. As he continued this project, Atanasoff realized he needed help creating his design. So, fellow college professor Harold Anderson introduced him to 21-year-old Clifford Berry. Clifford Edward Berry was born in Gladbrook, Iowa on April 19, 1918 to Friedrich Berry and Grace Strom. When Berry was young, his dad owned an appliance store where Berry would tinker with the electronic devices. With his father's supervision, he created a ham radio and attracted a swarm of visitors from the town to see the first radio in Gladbrook. At age 11, his family moved to Morango, Iowa, where his father accepted a job at the power company. During his time there, Barry was a genius in school, skipping a grade and making the honor roll every quarter. Unfortunately, a tragic event happened when he was a sophomore. His father was murdered by a former employee who had been fired. His mother decided they would stay in Iowa because that was their home. They stayed until he went to college at Iowa State, where he pursued his love of electrical engineering. He received his bachelor's in electrical engineering in 1939. Later that year, Professor Harold Anderson introduced him to Professor John Atanasoff. The pair were instantly friends. Shortly afterwards, Atanasoff asked him if he would join him in working on a project to create the first digital computing machine. Barry accepted, and he and Atanasoff went to work on his design. They started in 1939 on their design, which they later named the Atanasoff Barry Computer, or the ABC for short. Later that year, the so-called impossible computer was in its early stages of testing. 
It easily dwarfed any analog computer, such as the German Z1, which was used in World War II by the Nazis to calculate V2 missile strikes and even his own Laplace meter. This computer was now in a category of its own. It was running its components on binary code. It continued to amaze as its accuracy was impressive. It didn't even have another device to challenge its superiority for three years. It was truly a remarkable step in the evolution of humanity. They submitted the manuscript describing the designs of the computer and to get a patent on its advanced concepts for the computer. They gave the patents to Iowa State where they hired patent officer Richard R. Trexlar to receive their patent on the groundbreaking ABC computer. As the United States entered World War II, Atanasoff and Barry were forced to put their final paperwork of the ABC on hold due to the defense-related jobs they both took. Barry went to Pasadena, California to work at the CEC. Atanasoff went to Washington, D.C., where he worked as a chief of naval acoustics. He was later flown to the Pacific, where he observed the first atomic bomb test, which was a project he enjoyed very much. In 1948, they returned to Iowa to find the groundbreaking computer they had worked so hard on had been scrapped to make room for the Manhattan Project. Meanwhile, Barry was taking the dismantling of the ABC a lot better than Atanasoff and was having a successful career at the CEC. In October of 1963, Barry left the CEC to become a manager of advanced de development at the Vacuum Electronics Company in New York. He moved ahead of his wife and two kids to get situated with his job and house. Tragically, Clifford Edward Barry died October 30, 1963, at age 45 in his home in Plainview, New York. The coroner ruled it as a possible suicide by suffocation, but to the suddenness of his death, his family suspected foul play. He had issued 30 patents and had 13 patents pending at the time of his death. In World War II, the patent had been floating around when a group of men managed to get their hands on these designs, which they would use to build their computer. In Yak, it was considered by most people at the time to be the first computer, which the press dubbed the digital brain. In reality, it used the same concepts and designs as the ABC did, even though some may argue this device was used for different tasks. As time continued, the ABC slowly faded away from interest of the country, forgotten and out of existence until Atanasoff realized that this digital brain used the same designs and ideas the ABC did. All the credit of the invention of the first computer was being stolen by ENIAC. Shortly after ENIAC was presented, the Sperry Rand Corporation bought ENIAC. Impressed with its original design, Atanasoff cooperated with Honeywell Corporations in challenging the ENIAC patents. Atanasoff filed a lawsuit against ENIAC on May 26, 1967. The trial finally began on June 1, 1971, and the verdict was finally reached on October 19, 1973. The judges had ruled the first digital computer was the ABC. Atanasoff had finally proven that they were the first and ENIAC was based off their computer. Sadly, the public didn't hear much about the judge's findings because it was barely or never told about on the news because the Watergate scandal was unfolding, making it still unknown that the ABC was the first computer. In the beginning of 1995, the construction of a replica of the ABC started at ISU. Sadly, tragedy struck before ISU could show Atanasoff. After a long illness, John Vincent Atanasoff died of a stroke in his home in Maryland on June 15, 1995, at age 91. John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry will always be remembered as the fathers of the digital age and the creators of the ABC, a marvel of technology that to this day is known as the world's first digital computer. John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry's le leadership has created one of the world's greatest legacies, from drones to iPods to video games to servers that upload hundreds of hours of video each day. All this would not have been possible without John Atanasoff's ideas and Clifford Berry's skills. Without him, Iowa would not be credited as the birthplace of the digital computer. Thanks to Clifford Berry for his engineering skills and his partnership with John Atanasoff, without him, the invention of the computer would not have been possible until decades later. For all we know, we might not have invented the computer until this decade. These two inventors changed the world, and without them, we would not be as technologically advanced as we are today. John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry are considered the fathers of the digital age because they built the giant calculator that has evolved into the computer of today. The world will never be the same without them. Their creation is still impacting the world today, making John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry the leaders of the digital revolution because of the legacy of the ABC computer that now lets humanity thrive in this world and the digital world. And because of them, Iowa is the birthplace of the digital age. As soon as you are